Many people have different tastes. What seems strange to you might be a delicacy in someone else's eyes. Snake brain, anyone? The human relationship with food has always steered society. From domesticating animals and wheat to crossbreeding plants to make them more edible, humans have continuously refined the process of finding available food. Today is no different, and our days still usually revolve around what and when to eat. We have food blogs, grocery stores, restaurants, bakeries, cafes, and many other food-serving establishments constantly striving to turn the necessary consumption process into an enjoyable activity. But what about our ancestors? Here are 11 of the weirdest things people used to eat. Some are still even eaten today. Acorns Given the number of animals that eat acorns, this might not seem so weird. However, acorns contain tannins that not only taste bitter and unpleasant, they're actually toxic to humans, horses, cattle, and dogs when consumed in large amounts. However, the horrible taste of this poisonous nut did not put our ancestors off using it as food. Making acorns edible is a long and tedious process. First, you have to break off the outer shell. Then you need to remove the tannins from the nut by soaking them for a couple of hours in water until the water runs clear. Next, they had to be dried before being roasted, ground into flour, or made into porridge. Acorns were a staple of prehistoric humans. As oak trees are found throughout North America, Africa, Europe, and Asia, many civilizations utilize these methods to consume acorns. Today, there are many recipes for eating acorns on the internet, with reports that they taste sweet and nutty. However, this depends on the acorn type, as some people report them to taste bland or downright horrible. After all, there's got to be a reason why this widely eaten food fell out of popularity. Even during medieval times, English acorns were seen as a last resort and only used when other crops were scarce. Songbirds Nowadays, we limit our bird consumption to a few types of farmed animals – chicken, duck, turkey, and maybe pheasant or quail if you're feeling super fancy. The main reason we only eat this limited selection of our feathered friends is primarily due to how much meat they produce and how easy it is to remove the bones. However, our ancestors had no such restrictions. Robins, larks, and of course blackbirds all found themselves on the plates and in the pies of hungry humans. A cookbook published in 1890 contains a recipe for robin pie that uses 10 to 12 of the small birds cooked inside puff pastry. Luckily for the robins, they are now protected under the Migratory Bird Act, along with many other small birds. Songbirds are still eaten as a delicacy in many parts of the world, but the practice is highly controversial. Laws have been put in place by multiple countries to try and stop people from hunting small migratory birds, as many of them are now endangered. One of the most divisive dishes is ortolan. This traditional French delicacy is made by force-feeding the tiny songbird before drowning it in Armagnac brandy. The bird is then cooked, plucked, and eaten whole in one bite. The consumer veils their face with a napkin when gulping down the bird supposedly to hide the shame of eating the beautiful creature from the eyes of God. Ortolan is now on the endangered list in France, but unfortunately, illegal poaching is still prevalent. Mice Mice have been eaten as a delicacy throughout the world, but the Romans really made a meal out of them. Their rodent of choice was the cute and chubby dormouse. Roman chefs even had special containers called a glirarium or vivaria mindolis to house the little critters while they were fattened up for the table. These clay containers were especially made for the job. They looked like a squat storage jar on the outside and resembled a burrow on the inside. They were ventilated and had channels along the sides that the dormice could scurry around. The pots were also fitted with a hollow for holding the food, which would be topped up from the outside. The dormice were fed chestnuts, acorns, and walnuts and left to grow as fat as possible. Once the mice were deemed big enough to eat, the Romans had many ways of preparing them for consumption. Some Roman dormice recipes are found in ancient texts. One notes they were seasoned with honey and poppy seed, while another has them stuffed with pork and their own trimmings, pounded out with pepper, broth, and nuts before being roasted or boiled in a casserole. Ambergris Ambergris is a waxy yet solid substance that comes from the intestines of a sperm whale. 
It is unknown how ambergris is formed or whether it is a normal or a pathological process. It has been postulated that it is a substance that protects the whale's intestines against the horny beaks of squid and cuttlefish, and that it is ejected by the whale when pieces become too big. Once a sperm whale is ejected it, either like vomit or, more often, poop, ambergris floats on the sea before washing ashore. It was formerly thought to be either a product of underwater volcanoes, seabird droppings, or come from some unknown sea creature. But hypothesizing about its origins did not stop people from eating it. In Turkey, it was used as an ingredient in cooking. The Dutch and English enjoyed it with their morning eggs. An annotated edition of John Milton's Paradise Lost recommends melting it onto roasted game. There are reports that famous Italian lover Casanova used ambergris as an aphrodisiac, and wine merchants would use it to flavor their wine. Nowadays, it is mainly used for medicines by Eastern cultures and to stabilize the scent of fine perfumes in the West. If you are ever lucky enough to come across this disgusting substance, you definitely shouldn't discard it, as it can be worth up to $40,000 per kilogram. Jello Salad In 1845, powdered gelatin came onto the market in the United States, but many people ignored it. In 1894, things began to change and many very strange recipes came with it. Jelly dishes were nothing new, having been around since medieval times. Back then, the process of rendering and clarifying the collagen from animal bones and calf's feet was lengthy, and jellied food was strictly reserved for the tables of the wealthy. During the 19th century, home economics, also known as domestic science, transformed the way people prepared food at home. Jello, which was first sold in 1897, fit with a new passion for convenience and cleanliness. In 1905, Mrs. John E. Cook printed a recipe for what she called Perfection Salad, which encased shredded cabbage, celery, and red peppers in lemon jello. From there on, every food imaginable was encased in jello, often with a theme. Elaborate molds meant each dish was presented in a striking manner. Cookbooks were filled with jellied salad dishes containing chicken, fish, olives, mayonnaise, and even veal encased in sweet jello. Many of these dishes might look inherently unappetizing to us now, and jellied salad is considered highly retro, but if you're struggling to get your kids to eat veggies, it might be worth giving this a go. Iguanas and their eggs The Maya used to love the leathery eggs of the black iguana. Inside, these eggs are all yolk and supposedly taste more like cheese than bird eggs. It has been suggested that the Yucatan Maya ate iguana for over a millennium, with iguana bones found at archaeological sites along with those of deer, turkey, and fish. Supposedly, the most common way of cooking iguana was to roast it over a fire, but they also used the meat in stews and tamales. Although they are on this list, in recent years, the practice of eating iguana eggs and iguanas themselves has had a resurgence. In some areas, iguanas are an invasive species and with limited natural predators, they can begin to overpopulate an area. The solution? Eat them. They are said to taste a bit like chicken, only sweeter, and since their skins can also be used as leather, they can act as both a source of protein and income, as long as you don't mind skinning and eating a lizard. Cockatrice. This food fad is truly bizarre. During the medieval and Tudor periods, chefs delighted and perhaps terrified nobles by presenting them with the cockatrice, that is, half chicken or turkey and half pig. Fortunately, this wasn't some horrifying crossbreed, but the way it was made is disturbing and baffling as to why they would go to the effort. According to an old medieval recipe, you would take a killed and plucked capon, a castrated cockerel fed a rich fatty diet, or turkey and a pig. You would then scald the dead animals in boiling water before cutting them in half and gutting them. Next, the halves of the two animals were sewn together, with the head of the pig on the body of the capon and vice versa. Then, both hybrid animals would be stuffed, spit-roasted, and glazed with a mix of egg yolks, ginger, and saffron. If you are, for some reason, curious to see for yourself how this abomination was prepared, British celebrity chef Heston Blumenthal recreated this dish for a Tudor-themed feast back in 2010. Beaver Tails to be clear, we are not talking about the famous Canadian donut, but the literal tails of beavers. 
While beavers are now mainly found in North America, Eurasian beavers were once found across Europe, including Britain. As experts in circumventing our own self-imposed rules, beaver tails were considered acceptable to eat during Lent and other fasting times when the eating of meat was forbidden. A book from 1460 recommends using beaver tails in pea soup, and in regions of Germany and Scandinavia, they were prepared and eaten the same way as fish. For religious purposes, the tail of the beaver was considered to be a fish. This classification was due to its use when the beaver was swimming and its scaly appearance. In many medieval illustrations of beavers, their tail is depicted as a fish tail. But eating beaver tails wasn't just restricted to Europeans. Any culture that used beaver pelts ate beaver from top to tail. The tail itself is made up of spongy fat with one bone running down the middle and is said to have a vaguely fishy taste. It was a valuable source of fat for many indigenous northerners and is still eaten in some areas today. Turtle Soup and Mock Turtle Soup During the 1700s, turtle soup was considered hot cuisine by the aristocracy of Europe. During the Age of Discovery, some sailors kept live turtles aboard their ships for a supply of fresh meat, a tip that they had picked up from the indigenous people of the Caribbean. Turtle soup then graced the table of many European dignitaries, who enjoyed feasting on the exotic delicacies brought back from various voyages. Up to 15,000 live turtles were being shipped to Europe from the West Indies a year by 1878. The soup was often served in the turtle shell to add to its aesthetic. The popularity of turtle soup gave rise to mock turtle soup. If you are familiar with Alice in Wonderland, you will know that the mock turtle has the body of a turtle and the head of a calf. This description might give you some clue about the main ingredient of mock turtle soup. As calf heads were a lot easier to come by than turtle meat, they replaced the expensive and increasingly rare turtles. Along with beef neck, ham, oysters, calf's brains, and shins, the soup tried to mimic the complex flavor of turtle meat. It became so popular that Heinz released a pre-canned version. In China and several other Asian countries, turtle soup is a delicacy and if you have a spare calf's head laying around, many recipes for mock turtle soup can be found online. Black Soup If you have heard of black pudding, you will already know what is in black soup. Black soup was a staple in ancient Sparta and was made of pig's blood, boiled pig's legs, salt, and vinegar. Historians believe that the addition of vinegar was to stop the blood from clotting when cooking the soup. This soup reportedly tasted as horrible as it sounds, one description states, Now I do perceive why it is that Spartan soldiers encountered death so joyfully. Dead men require no longer to eat. Black broth is no longer a necessity. Despite this stark description, black soup is still eaten in many parts of Europe and Asia today, and, depending on the recipe, uses pig, chicken, goose, or duck blood. Luckily, they contain more ingredients than the Spartan version, so they probably taste a bit more flavorful. Flamingo Tongue This dish is another one from the Romans. In ancient Rome, food was used as a status symbol, and the more exotic the food, the greater the display of wealth and class. The Romans ate any birds they could find, from pigeons to peacocks, but flamingos were thought to be the fanciest of the feathered foodstuffs. While they ate the entire flamingo, the tongue was considered a special delicacy. According to Pliny the Elder, a famous historian from ancient Rome, the renowned Roman gourmet Apicius established the view that the flamingo's tongue was a specifically fine flavor. Of all the weird food on this list, this one seems the least likely to make a comeback. Although there are probably some recipes out there, the chances of getting your hands on some flamingo tongues is highly unlikely. Many of the foods on this list are still eaten today somewhere in the world. If it's true that one person's trash is another person's treasure, it is also true that one person's delicacy can be disgusting to others. When speculating on how successful the human species has been in spreading and surviving, perhaps it can be put down to the fact that we can and will eat pretty much anything. We hope you enjoyed this video on 11 of the weirdest things people actually used to eat. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this. Also, Grab your free Mythology Bundle ebook while it's still available. All links are in the description.